Now then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new episode of the RGM Experience podcast with me, Carl Maloney. How are you doing, Johnny? Uh, my hair's looking funny. I'm growing my hair out, Caleb. Uh, and it's going all a bit funny. Um, and we're on tele, we're on YouTube. L- ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode, as I've just said. Uh, we're here on YouTube, delving into the grassroots music industry, uh, meeting interesting people to talk about their journey, wherever they are, trying to make it in this fucking music industry that we find ourselves in. And today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've got Caleb Francis. Hi, mate. Hi, Carl. You all right? Yeah, fine, thanks, mate. What a fucking industry this is. It's hard work, isn't it? I know it is, yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's easy to have to plug away at it, yeah. <laughs> well, we won't be here. We, I, I like to moan about it. I don't know why, but I like to moan about what I do. But deep down, I love it and I won't have it any other way. Yeah, I know what you mean about that, yeah. <laughs> I agree with that, yeah. Yeah, we won't be here if we, didn't, if we weren't asked, would we? No, definitely not, no. Yeah, but well, thanks for joining us today, mate. And a full disclosure... Um, you know, I've known you for a while in Sheffield and uh put your band on on the first ever gig that you had, I think, weren't it? At Frog and Parrot when we had the wire done when you were just young. We our first. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we were kids then. Was it we? not the first? It weren't the first, no. It, yeah. it, it was oh. one of the probably first five. It was when we were just playing in pubs and whatnot in Sheffield. And yeah, I remember that one. That does that mean that. does that mean it was the fifth one then? It be I uh, yeah, we'll say <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could take that. Well, uh, you know, there's always a story to tell, and everybody's got their own journey. You've got your solo project out now that we're going to come to as well that we're uh, that we're looking forward to sharing our GM shortly. Uh, but let's for for the people that aren't aware of who you are, mate, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so like I, said, I was in a band probably about nine years ago. I first started a band called The Wired, uh, and then that just came to a gradual end a couple of years ago. We were gigging in Sheffield, gigging outside Sheffield at a few festival, did all right. Yeah, uh, and that stopped just because, to be honest with you, it felt like we were starting to flog a bit of a dead horse. So we thought, well, we're just going to stop, do a farewell show, and that was it, really. Uh, and then I just started just do, just carry on writing as you do because I think it's one of the things that I'll, I'll always do, like being be involved in music to some extent, playing or writing. Mm-hmm. And then I started doing some demos about about eighteen months ago, and and then slowly started to form sort of a live live band around me. Yeah, uh, and then before we you know, it got back into gigging under this new this new sort of solo project. Uh, and now at the point where we're going to release our sort of new first single under this new thing. So, yeah, so, so, it, so yeah it's, it's got to that point now, really. It's almost like this is really the start of the solo thing. Yeah. And, and it's exciting, to be honest, to, to do something. It's like starting again all over again, but there's something nice about that. And it's like I'm doing something that I feel quite proud of and happy with. So nice. that's where power things, really. Well, that's about 15 years in one minute there, mate. So (laughs) that's it. That's the interview done. (laughs) By the single. (laughs) Let's rewind a little bit then. So, so when you, so what were you like um, as a young kid, as somebody that maybe not found a love for music yet, you know, just growing up around you, what were it like in, in Sheffield for you growing up and what was the, what was the political landscape like around you growing up as a young kid? Um, I mean, I so when I first started a band, it was oh, it, before music, miles before, before that. that. Oh, so you're yeah. talking about before yeah, that's, that, that's, right. that's way back, yeah, way back. Ugh. Well, I mean, I, I, my family's always been into music, so I yeah. guess that's what first got me into it. My dad, my dad was he used to be a sort of known soul DJ, he still DJs now, like at weekends yeah. and yeah. puts his own nights on and things like that. So I guess. Music was always in the house. My mum's always been into music. Like, she's got very sort of wide taste in music. So there's always been music played. There's always been records. So I think it, when I first started to get into music, when I was probably like, you know, as you do when you're like a teenager, there was always stuff there to latch on to and interest. And that's really, I guess, what I first started listening to was all that sort of soul music and things like that. Because that's what was played in the house all the time. That's what my dad banged on about. And every t- every time we car, that's that's what he'd play. So that that's what I originally got into. And then I guess he started listening to guitar music, and you get into obviously all the all the classics, don't you? Like Oasis yeah. and things like that. And you think, I guess it's bands like that that think, oh, I think I can probably start a band. And that that that's what starts things really. Yeah. So your, your dad being a DJ then. So what 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 was that like? Was he out quite a lot, or was he like? Did he introduce you to? New, was it Northern Soul type stuff? You said. Yeah, yeah. So to be honest, when we were kids, he weren't he weren't doing a DJ. He sort of stopped by that point. Uh, but he's restarted again, sort of more recently. But he was always playing records. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know. He, I don't. Know, he's got 
fucking like hundreds of records, thousands of records. So there's always there's always music playing in the house. He's he's always said like you know it'll get buried with some records. So that yeah. it's, you know he's he's he'll yeah. actually, he's that much of a order for him. So because of that, there was always music going on in the house. Um, and stuff he'd play me and stuff like I'd be listening to this and things like that. And that, that I guess you listen to stuff like that. It opens doors to other things, doesn't it? You think, oh, what was that artist? Who listened to that artist? So who inspired that artist so, and what sort that sort of thing. But it's just that that's how I guess how I really got into music, I guess, really. So my dad was a big a big part of that. So I, I know what it's like being when I first got into music, I started to get into I started to play in a brass band. And I can remember mm-hmm. it not being very cool at some point. And I kind of I was a little bit embarrassed by it, I think. And then I because I because I knew all yeah, the yeah. that were into like I don't know Nirvana and all that kind of stuff at the time when all that were go- going on and they were all starting to play guitar and stuff and I'm here with this fucking tenor horn and I'm just about like mm. I, I I knew I loved music but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it yet. Uh, what was the journey like for you? I guess similar to be honest, like when when I'm in school, I start I first started playing guitar. I think it was sort of an uncool thing to do. Looking back now, like you say, it was almost like. I don't know, you're a bit of a weirdo if you spent your lunch times in yeah. in practice room just playing a guitar. Yeah. But I don't know. It's one of the things that I guess when I was when I first picked it up, you become obsessional about it, don't you? You get I remember getting so frustrated at not like being able to to put you know pull the strong a, a song together. And all of a sudden it's like you keep going at it. And then it's like overnight it just seems to click, doesn't it? And you can do it. I don't know if that's what happened with you. Oh, yeah. But you spend I spent like hours like sat at home just playing it and getting absolutely getting like in my own head, so frustrated about not being able to to like play enough chords to, to make a song or to play along to a song and all of a sudden I got it but yeah I think it, looking back at school now it probably was something that were a bit like oh, that's a bit that's a bit strange but then I think I don't know that's what school was like in it it's a bit of a, it's yeah. a bit of a weird when you look back now you think mm, that's not that's not right is it yeah you know yeah. you just when I look back at what I were like at like I don't know 13 14 15 I was just like this blob that didn't have a fucking clue what life were all about it was just like a movement <laughs> maybe i could think of a better word than a blob but whatever we'll go with it just you know just not having a clue what you want to do just you know just being influenced by him her uh all these things around you just not having a clue yeah. just just i don't know just aimlessly wandering about just trying to find things that i'm interested in um how how, how did the guitar like manifest itself why the guitar I think because it, it was so accessible, I actually, the first yeah. guitar, my dad got me from a car boot sale, I think he bought it for about yeah. £1.20. Yeah. Being, nice. being, I always thought that'd be interesting, you know, if that's like some proper vintage, beautiful guitar that I just didn't realise how good it was. <laughs> like, I thought it was some old banger that it could have been something that yeah. I probably weren't like, but, so <laughs> that's, that, that, that's how I first got into it. I remember trying to tune, I couldn't tune it, and I didn't have tune it at that point, I didn't know what a tune it was, so I like listening to YouTube videos, uh-huh. like, this is an E and trying to like tune up using a, I didn't have a pick, I just used like a, a penny. I remember just like doing that, just trying to tune it and it sounded, it sounded terrible. Like, but I think because of how accessible it was, it's one of the things, isn't it? And, and, and you see, and that's when you first, I first got into like indie music and you see, you see like bands that you love playing guitar, you think, I'm going to be like that, I can do that. Mm. Um, that's that, that, that bit really. We just find things where I don't know, I do just, just something, there's something pretty beautiful about a guitar right now. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know. It's just, it's just. I don't know. It's so accessible. Isn't it? It's like keyboard or something yeah. like that. It seemed, it seemed like a million miles away from something I could do. But like I say, literally brought his guitar into the house and started trying to play it very badly. And that was it, really. And then, and then since that, like I say, I just got sort of hooked on it. And then again, got like a really cheap second-hand electric guitar. Started playing that. I remember like playing on this on this really rubbish amp. And then I, I pressed this button and I thought, oh, this is this is distortion. I didn't know what distortion <laughs> was. <laughs> yeah. I know, like, it's everything, just playing it loud, you know, and just stuff like that. And it was, you just got hooked, don't you? Just get hooked, don't you? On it, you, just, you have like when, you, especially when you're that age, you're like, you think this is this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a guitarist in a band. <laughs> yeah, you you really do. It's hypnotic in a way, learning, especially when you learn a new chord structure or a new chord, or if you uh, if you didn't realize that your favorite songs made out of these three chords that you already knew when you played it in the same order and. You, you, you're fucking Kurt Cobain for half an hour or something while you're just getting into this tune. It's magical, isn't it, learning a musical instrument? I'd, I'd recommend it to do it to anybody, no matter what age you are. I think it's such an ama- amazing thing to be able to do. Yeah, I, I say that some some people now don't play like we're really into music. I'm like, just, just play something, just pick it up. But you know, you don't have to like, you don't mean go out and start gigging and playing in front of people. Just, just yeah. I don't know. Just, like you say, it's just something, it's something special about it, isn't it? Really, I know it sounds a bit like it's but it really is. 
I could never get involved with a keyboard. It would just it would just a step too far for me to be able to these sausage little fingers to to move move a bar. I just couldn't get my head around the keyboard. I, did you did you delve into any other instruments or have any other questions for other ones? I've tried more recently. I've tried to start playing keyboard. I mean, I can play it badly. I can. It's, I can do. I can. Yeah, you know, I can roughly move around a few chords, but I can. I can play a song, and I don't think to any sort of capable level. But it's something I'm trying to do. I yeah. did remember like, giving drums a go when I was like when I was younger, but that was just only <laughs> too much for me. I was like, I was just all over the shop. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I do want. I do want to. I do need to put my time into playing keyboard, but it's it's hard, isn't it? When you, with everything else, really, it's like, but yeah, it key, keyboard is something I would like. I would definitely like to sit down and write. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm so jealous of people that can just sit down and just bang a tune out on a keyboard. I just think that, I just think that's amazing. I'm just yeah. always jealous of that shit. There's something more daunting isn't there about a keyboard than a guitar. Yeah, there is. I don't, yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's, yeah. it just seems scary, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, maybe it's just a mental block. Maybe I just need to get over it and just. You've just got to practice, aren't you? And you'll get there, I suppose. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, he's got. You've got to put the hours in, and that's the only way to yeah. do it, really. Yeah, definitely. So you know, you picked up your guitar, you started. Oh, you're interested. You, you you're doing this thing. Uh, your dad's into music. Music's all around you. Um, what age were you at this stage then? Well, just for the timeline, what what? How old are you? 14, 15, fourteen, fifteen. Right. I first started playing properly. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And what are you now? Sixteen. <laughs> Twenty six. Are you twenty six now? Jesus Christ! Yeah. I think you were, I think you were illegal when we had you on at Frog. I still yeah, I were. you were like yeah. sixteen year old, Caleb. I were, yeah, I were, I were. But I still, yeah. <laughs> Not I mean now. I still think of you at that age. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> little kid. Oh, there you go, Caleb's here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so uh, right, okay. So, just finishing school then, and that kind of stuff. Were Were you moving into college? Is that when you started to think Ooh. about starting a band and stuff then? Yeah, when we first when we moved in sixth form, I remember like getting me getting me my mate Richard who who ended up being a bass player in the band. I remember like saying to him, just just learn bass. It's one of them. Isn't it? It's like someone just learn bass. You could be in a band, you learn bass and that sort of thing. And, and before we knew it, we just sort of found people like guitar player. We found him at sixth form. Yeah. We found the drummer at sixth form and things like that. And before you know it, he's like, oh, we can do this. We can be in a band. And I think like you say when, when we first played for you in Frogging Parrot, it must have only been sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then it's like it's like saying it's like you, you learn a few songs and you think right I'm gonna I'm gonna try and write something myself now and then you end up writing something that's dreadful but because it's yours you think it's the best thing ever don't you you're so proud of it I, I remember the feeling of when I, when you first play like your own song with an, in in the band in a practice room and you're like 16 it's like this is this yeah. is unbelievable. like you look back now, it's probably, probably rubbish but it don't matter does it it don't matter it's like yeah. that feeling of like something you wrote and other people play along to it and you're sort of writing lyrics for it and singing. Some, I don't know, there was something like that first time. I think like at that point was I was just hooked into playing in a band. You, know, you, just, you just you just get hooked with it. So yeah, so you made somebody against their will play the ba- the bass. So that's how you yeah. got that. How did you how did you meet the rest of the lads at that time? I know there's been a, a few changes in the wire over the years, but you know, just just going back to the early days, how did you find these people to start? Yeah, it was a bit of a revolving door, wasn't it? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, just okay, we'll get to why that was in a bit. <laughs> you need yourself. Uh, who's sixth form? Just just in sixth form, so she yeah. like someone. So we knew someone to play drums. Uh, Jacob who ended up playing guitar. He played guitar. Whenever we met him at sixth form, I was like, "Yeah, do you want to join a big guitarist in our band?" And that that was it. It was literally like that. And then bringing a guitar into school, going to practice a few nights every week, and then. Got to the point where we're like, hey, we think we can we can play gig here. And obviously, your first gig, you get all your mates from sixth form down, so they're all drinking underage and whatnot. It was just like, yeah. and all of a sudden, you go from like being a bit uncool for playing guitar, and you're like, oh, oh people people think you're all yeah. right now guitar because you, you can get into a pub and you can get a few drinks down you as well when you're like 16, 17. So yeah, it, it, it flips it's quickly turned on its head. Yeah. So how did you like? So, so, so the band started. Was it you? Was it just yourself that were writing the tunes? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, very much like I'll write. I'd write a song and take it to the band, and then they put their bits on. So I'd say, "Can you, can you play a bit like that?" That, that was it, really. And then we just sort of got into that. It was I bring them songs, and then they put their parts on, and then we jam it out a bit, and we play it, and then be like, "Oh, we've got something that's presentable for a gig now." That was it, really. Like the other lads didn't really weren't really into writing as much. Whereas I was, I, don't, I was going through that stage where you feel like I say first picked up, you come, you become obsessional about it, don't you? Mm. It's constantly writing stuff or writing things down and making notes of things. Think, oh, that could be a good song title and, and rubbish like that, really. So yeah, that 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 was the process, really. I'd, I'd, I'd write a song, bring it to the band, and then they play it, really, and we play it and we jam it out, and then they say, oh, I don't like this, we change it, 
very, I guess, very organic, isn't it? Really, that's what I, I guess that's how a lot of bands go about. Go it is really things. organic, and and this thing that I've created, RGM, started off being organic because ten years ago, when when we had, I, I think I, I had like a memory pop up on Facebook, and it had the wired come up on a really, really shitty poster that I'd made yeah, yeah. years ago, and I didn't have a clue what I were doing. Um, yeah. It, it, I, I, I needed somewhere, so I, I. At the Frog and Pirate, I like to introduce introduce uh, interview bands, and I think I've still got the old recording. I was having a chat at some point that I'll dig out, or maybe I'd like to see that, uh, yeah, or maybe, yeah, or maybe not. Uh, I'll, I'll try and find it out for us. But um, yeah, that that was ten years ago. I, I needed a website to put those interviews on, and then that ended up being a website, and then that's turned into RGM organically over the years. It's amazing where you know you, you just put yourself out of your comfort zone and just do these new things. And you sold out like Leadmill and that kind of stuff, and and had many you know gigs all over the place. It's yeah. putting yourself out of your comfort zone. Amazing things can happen from doing that kind of stuff, innit? it? Did you, did you, was that a conscious thing to do to crack on and take it more seriously as a band, or was it just a bit of fun? No, I think I think we did. I think we did try and take it more seriously at one point. At some, I don't know what that point was. I think when we first got over the, the sort of. I find being so scared to that first gig because it's like all your schoolmates are coming down. You're thinking, if I'm rubbish here, like how am I going to walk back into school and or sixth form, whatever you want to call it, on a Monday? Yeah. But after that, I think we just got to a point where we just, I don't know. I mean, you've got so much time on your hands. It felt like then as well, you've got so much time just to do work, and we just all of a sudden started booking gigs and things like that, releasing music. And before you know it, you're like we built up like a decent little following. But then I think we thought, right, let's let's knuckle down on this. I, don't, I think I don't think having knuckled down is probably as much as we, we should have done. Looking back, but we yeah. definitely we definitely give it a go, sort of thing. And we thought, right, let's let's try and like let's try and when we did a show, we try and make the show as good as, as good as possible. Like let's try and promote it. And we did put a lot of work into that sort of thing as well. And I think it did pay off a bit to some extent. It's a big uh, commitment from everybody as well. And yeah. when when I speak to a lot of bands, you know that. Life gets in the way for some people that they're not as passionate about it as you, maybe different members in the band. They've got other things going on that they want to concentrate on. Sometimes music is just not for everybody, you know, the the grind of it all. Um, what was it like when you first started off in The Wanted, uh, when you started to take it more seriously? How how did it take its toll on the rest of the people around the band with you? Um, I guess I guess it got, it got difficult to some extent. I guess that's why some people left, because... You get to a point, I guess, when you're like late teens, early 20s, where some people start thinking about a career or a proper job and things like that. And because of that, it's hard to commit to driving to Glasgow on a Friday to go and play to four people or something, isn't it? But yeah. a lot of people don't want to do it. So I think for reasons like that, we had we'd had different members and things like that. People joined, people left or whatever. But I dish guess- the dirt. While we're on it, then, let's dish the dirt. So why did some people leave? With it? <laughs> go on, just... A better insight into why it happened. Why not? Nothing particularly exciting, really. Oh, uh, it's, it, it's literally it's literally as boring as that. Uh, it, it, it were nice to be fair because on, on our last gig, that last ever show that we did, we got like so many old people back. So ended up having like six of us on stage. Right, right, yeah, so that was that was good. But mainly, mainly were just people like I guess people just not having the time to do it anymore. Mm. Um, which is sad. But I guess yeah. Looking looking back, I think if if we did knuckle down a bit more, we could have got a bit further. But there you go. Yeah, uh, I get you. And how how did you go about finding the right people that were had the same passion for you? Then because that's another fucking chapter in it, you know. Try to find somebody that's as passionate about your music and they want to crack on as well. But I think I think we're lucky for for drummers because when we when when our old drummers stopped, we we were quite good mates with a band called the SSS. So we and they were just finishing oh, yeah. the time. Yeah. So Max Max came and drummed for us for a couple of years, which which are Andy. Yeah. And then, I, and then after that, and after I guess like guitar players, I think guitar players we might have even put like an advert out who wants to come and play guitar in a band and things like that. And I guess it is that sort of thing, like trying to find someone that's also going to be committed to practice a couple of times a week and be committed to gigging, and not just you know, not 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 just maybe do it once every few every, once a couple of times a month something like that. We, I think we made it clear that we want to be want to be out there, want to be gigging, want to be practicing yeah. like a couple of times a week and things like that. The SSS is a blast from the past. They had mm. real momentum. They they had a really good go at it, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We played we played quite a few shows with them back in the day. Yeah, yeah. We, we did quite a few shows at Ledman with them, and yeah, they, they again they were they were a band that seemed to work really hard and grafted it and had yeah. a bit of following and built built that momentum. Up, like you say, there's no real secret to doing well as a band. It's just like it always comes back to graft. 
Uh, and and finding your own path and just grafting and just doing everything you can and not not be out there fucking moaning every five minutes that you haven't got that somebody else is on a festival bill when you're not you know it, you know it can be a bit of a turn off and when you see bands that get frustrated with it yeah, yeah you've got you i think like what you said earlier it's like you've got to put yourself out there haven't you yeah you've got to be you know, i think the only way of like doing anything is by putting the time in and grafting and it's like now it's like obviously social media is a massive thing whereas i think even when the time we're talking about like when when i first started a band it wasn't really it wasn't like a yeah. it definitely weren't as important as it is now so obviously now i'm doing this new thing i'd look i to sort of like ask people how do you make a tiktok and things like that and yeah it's something that it's something that's new but you've got to be doing it aren't you because otherwise you're just going to be left behind it is that johnny brown put a big post out on facebook recently from um uh yeah johnny brown uh but did did you see it no uh, i didn't see it no it's real yeah it, it, a really long big rant i love his rants mm -hmm. uh, and he was just talking about musicians these days the uh you, you're kind of made to be this fucking robot that has to produce all these fucking reels and um you have to promote you have to be like a, a an editor you need to do all this other shit around you to to even be re uh not relevant like not even before you get relevant and when i say relevant i mean like well known yeah. Um, there's so much extra stuff and he's kind of like he, he's more of a purist he wants it to be all about the music and that kind of stuff which I completely understand um, but it's right in it you know like when I were doing RGM you have to learn how to make reels and all this shit and you know edit yeah. and make it look nice as people just aren't going to be bothered it's 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 a massive effort on top of all the effort you've got to put in uh, to write your songs and record them and pay the costs and all that, all the stuff that goes on with it all it's there's a lot isn't there but yeah, it's, it's, it seems to have changed. Like, so it's like almost like I, I don't know. I feel like after COVID, things are just like mm. the reels and all that sort of stuff. People are really that's what that's what people look at, don't they? I think mm. I remember like when I like say when we first doing shows, or whatever, like a few years ago, it was like just just put put on Facebook, create an event, and then push it more like word of mouth. We used to yeah. like go around with leaflets and stuff like that, but I don't know whether that's got the same impact that it will that it used to have. Really, I think now it's like it's having that presence online, isn't it? and putting like acoustic videos on, like doing little reels, like talking about it. people want, and I know like, I guess, it, I guess ideally it, it would be nice to be just about music, but it's not about that anymore. Is it? You've got to, you've got to, it's got to be like the full package sort of thing before. Yeah. And, and that's how you get on them bigger gigs and then bigger festivals. Cause they want to see you having a presence online. And it's pulling difficult because well, not, not everybody's like a, a storyteller on video or not everybody's got that talent to be able to do it. And some people do it when they ain't got the talent to do it. And it looks a bit naff yeah <laughs> there's all, there's so much to it you know I, don't, I respect anybody for doing it just for grafting it and having a go at it you know you, it's you learn at the end of the day don't you and you get better at stuff at your practice but um you have to become a bit of a fucking child's tv presenter and be a bit safe online as well which you know yeah. and, and another part of johnny brown's rant which i was completely behind is that everybody's so fucking safe these days you know everybody's scared of saying the wrong thing and get upsetting somebody they don't know over there and you know it's yeah, I'm sure, isn't it? uh, sure how do you feel about that kind of thing do you, are you conscious of that i think you're probably right, wrong. Yeah. i think i think you are in the back of your mind yeah i think yeah. you are i think yeah it's all like it's all a bit ailing to me all the, the yeah that whole that sort of stuff Cause like i say I, like i say I, I think i'm not the children's tv percent i'm not that good at speaking to camera and saying oh listen yeah. to my yeah, yeah. i don't know something about it that doesn't it's got to be genuine, hasn't it, as well? Yeah, so yeah let's people see straight through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that now I'm trying to find, well, what can I do? What sort of tiktok -y things or reels or whatever? What can I do that, that doesn't look cringe and someone's going to say, he's yeah. not like that in real life? So it's, it's try, trying to find your identity online, isn't it, as well? But going back to your question, yeah, I think I think, I think think you are. I think in the back of my mind, now you are worried about saying saying something that's going to piss people off or not people, yeah. if someone that's, I don't know. You've got. You've got. I think you would have been toes, aren't you? A bit more than you probably used to be. Yeah, I, 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 I just think you. You're always going to be safe if you if you've got conviction with what you're saying. Yeah, and you, and it's not just like something fucking stupid. If you yeah. say something stupid, then you're going to get hammered for it. Uh, if you're going to say something that uh, might be construed as the construed as uh, controversial, then just have you know be be able to back it up and explain you why you think the certain way that you do. You've got to. Uh, I, I think free speech is definitely still with us and you can say what you want and yeah. um but just be, be be prepared more than ever for when you do say something that's wrong people are going to tell you it's wrong um uh which i think is it's how it should be in it 
Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going it's, it's got to be genuine, aren't you, as well? I think yeah. if it's been all, if it's been authentic, people can say yeah. that. I think few people accept that, but it's just it's like I see some bands like that. Just, just, I don't know if students say stuff and think. I, mean, I think they're just saying that to get some clicks or yeah, get, oh yeah, to get a bit of, like slagging other bands off. And I don't know. I just yeah. I, I don't. I don't think the days of doing that seem. I don't. I don't know. I just don't think it's it's like that anymore. Isn't it? it should be a bit more yeah. support other people and I things think, like that. Yeah, it is a bit. It, it's a bit more of a safer place out there online. I think apart from yeah. Twitter, but Twitter's my favorite one of them all. So I don't know. Yeah, I see you on there. Yeah. <laughs> I, love it, I love it on Twitter. I, 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 I prefer Twitter than I think Facebook's just gone really boring. I think Instagram's just. I don't know. It's not real. It's just people pretending that they're pretty and, um, uh. And just I don't know, just nice food and stuff. But I think yeah. where the real people are, where, where the conversations are, where the where the attitude is, where the grit is, and where the where the storytelling is for me, that that's me personally. How how, how, do, you, how do you see the different socials? And how, how do you navigate through them and use them? You've you've got a new tune out, so you're gonna have to use them to promote yeah. the tune coming out. How how are you planning ahead for that kind of stuff? This is it's going back to that real thing, like bulk filming reels and things like that, and planning them to come out and, and all that sort of stuff. Like again, like TikTok seems like like it's a massive thing, isn't it? Now trying to get your song out, pushed out on TikTok. Yeah. So I've, I've done like an announcement video and things like that, but trying it, like I say, trying to keep it. I mean, I've, I've tried to do some of them videos, you know, where I'm talking to a camera and it's like, yeah, I can't do, I can't, I yeah. can't do that, like that sort of thing. Yeah, but like I say, because the single, it's like it's now, it's now, it's like you've got to sort of pop up put a proper plan on what you're going to post and when you're going to post it and who you're trying to reach and all that sort of stuff. It's got to be, it's almost like there's got to be a proper strategy to it, aren't there now? Yeah. 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 I still don't know what I'm really doing with it all. I just put it out when I think it's, I don't know. I, I just tend to put it out, put it out in the morning. Uh, yeah. First thing. So if people are on the way to work on bus, they might flick through it and see it. Yeah. Uh, dinner time, if they're on the dinner hour, uh, when they get back on the travel on the way back from work and in the evenings, I just tend to kind of stick to that. I, I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not. It, it seems like a decent idea, but you know, it's somewhat when it, sometimes when you see a few posts that go out that don't get any engagement at all, you're just like, am I just wasting all of my time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it, I've always been like, I'll, I, I've always made the assumption that it'll go down better in the evening because people are back from yeah. work. I've always tried to post things in the evening, but again, I don't know whether that's right or not. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know whether there's there's like algorithms and stuff like that in the now, so they might, they might push it at certain times. I don't know. I think we're all probably chancing it, aren't we? A bit with that sort of thing. It's oh. like you then you see some bands who've just got it nailed down. They are good at the social media, yeah. and it's like you see them same bands as cropping up, and it's like they know what they're doing. It's like fair play, fair play. But it's a good, good one. Uh, re- react to the fans and the and they and they and, and they and they thank people for sharing and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think that gets you a long way uh, yeah. rather than just. You know, just liking something, and not sharing it, and not commenting on it, and yeah, you know, I don't know. It's I, I don't know. It's different for everybody, isn't it? It's it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to know what to do sometimes, isn't it? It I, is, yeah. Right on. I just try and do everything. Apart from TikTok, I'm rubbish at that. I know I am. Um, yeah. But I, I, I basically just on TikTok, I just put reels that I've made for Instagram or for other stuff on that. Just yeah. plonk them that, on it. See what happens. I think I do as well, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting. I think you've got you've got to be putting stuff out there, aren't you? I think you've just yeah. got to have that presence. It's like I'm almost like, well, just put something out. It's better than not having anything there. Yeah, just, just yeah. put something out and just try and get a bit of traction and stuff like that. Like I say, it's it's it's. I think well, I'm just I'm just trying to navigate how to do it at the moment, especially like with this new mm-hmm. thing. It's all a bit. I'm all a bit wet behind the ears with it. Well, what I, what I can remember from the Wired days is is the presentation of the band live. You yeah. you were one of the only bands that went out your way and bought like a big W light. Yeah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. What was what was the thought process behind that and putting on as as good show as possible? That that I just thought that was fantastic. That no, nobody were doing that really. And no, I, an extra bit of money. How, how much was it for the big W? I mean, even that, we used to hire it. We didn't actually buy yeah, it. So yeah. hire it. I think it went about eighty quid for a show. Oh, which right, is, okay. Yeah, that's like it worth. It. I don't know. I think, yeah. I think we always were like, well, it was just that sort of thing. Like we wanted to look like a proper band. We yeah. wanted to. Put, Go on, that were like a we wanted someone to come to our gig and go. Oh, I've seen, a, I've seen a gig there. You know, that, that were good. Yeah. Um, rather than just, we, we always, I think we always try, especially ones in Sheffield, try to put a lot of work into like lighting and show, and we had like confetti cannons and stuff like that. The idea was we wanted people to go away and think that was that was worth the ticket money, and it was like we're going to come back to see the next one because I think if we just played, you know, like eight songs or whatever, and just said thank you, good night. I don't know. We want we wanted that sort of like we wanted to generate that buzz about ourselves as yeah. well and 
like things like that might have helped. And I think they did to some extent, didn't they? It's like, yeah, definitely. You've got, you've got to put the work into shows like that because people are coming to see a show, aren't they? At the end of the day, I'm not saying I'm going to be like prancing around like Mick Jagger or like that, but it's like they want to, they want to see something that's worth ticket money. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, how much is a confetti gone? Yeah, I don't, I, I, we used to use dice, so, so it, weren't that, it weren't that much, to be honest. Yeah. Used to, I think it was more expensive to get, like, the lemons clean it up after or something. Oh, so oh, right, did you have to pay for that? Did you have to pay for that? I can't remember, but I'm assuming that now, I think if you've got to do stuff, like, I'm sure I hear bands, like, saying that there's a, yeah, there's a charge, but, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. interesting, that's interesting. Uh, right, so, so, the, so the wire had happened, you played these big gigs, you, you went all over the place doing gigs out there, just having a go at it. When, when was the first stage for you when you thought, hmm... You know, it maybe would kind of run its course. When when did that start to seep in? Um, I think it would probably it would probably around COVID happen. COVID happened because we, we had a good summer in twenty nineteen. Like I did a few good festivals and things like we did tram lines. Uh, I remember seeing you actually at tram lines. Yeah. Right? Um we did like tram lines and things like that on the main stage and that was really great. And I think we thought we were gonna kick on a bit from then and then COVID happened, and I think that yeah. sort of knocked all the sort of wind out of our sails again. Uh and then, I mean, it cracked up. You can, you can practice for a while and things like that. And then I think at that point, people started to fall out of love with it because obviously we weren't, we weren't getting together, we weren't doing anything. Yeah. It was, again, at that point, it was hard to under, to know what to put on social media because you want people to you want people to know you're still, irrele- you're still relevant, but you had nothing you had nothing to do and no gigs to promote or not, nothing. You couldn't go and record a song or anything like that. Um, so now I think when, as, co- as, as we were coming out at the end of COVID, I think we just made a decision between us to say, let's let's call it a day really just because it's all in various reasons and let's let's just finish on a high do do one show which worked out well because i think it was yeah. down finished in like july 2021 and we played early or i think middle of august 2021 so it was like one of the first gigs that people came back to and things like that so yeah i think we made the decision to like let's call it a day and and, and try and bow out to some sort of you know some sort of success any itching uh any itchiness for a return of the wired no, I don't think so at the no. moment. Okay. No, no, no. I'm, at, the I'm, moment, I'm, at the moment, leaving that door slightly ajar. If someone, uh, maybe if like someone gets married in ten years or something like that. <laughs> oh, we'll, right, okay, fair enough. We'll come out. We'll come out for that. Oh <laughs> no. So, so, so you, so you, you said yourself, you carried on writing. Yeah, it's something that you're always going to do anyway. Um, what's it like now doing everything all on your own? You don't have these band of brothers behind you. Um. I, w- I was interviewing a guy called Yusuf earlier, and he's 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 doing his own stuff. Um, mm. And he said it's quite an isolating experience when he's been in bands previously before. When you're out there on your own, it's it's a different world, isn't it? When you're on your own, yeah. I'd, and to be honest, at first it was da- like daunting, like especially going under under my own name and stuff like that. It was it was, it was yeah. very it was very very daunting to be honest. But I've started to grow into, and, and luckily, I, I mean, I've got good people around me. Like the lads in the band are really good; they're all into it. Um, People down at the studio that we were that we, that we practice that they're all really they're all really supportive. We work with them, you know. They they, uh, they do our production and stuff like that. So it's it's it, it think it started like it was solo thing, but now it seems to be growing into more like you've got got people around who support and who are really good at what they do and really helpful. And I've got I've got so much time for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now it's become something that I'm I'm because I've got to a point where I'm, I'm actually really happy with how we're doing. I, I, yeah. I you know I feel like I'm doing something that that's more more me than what the old band was as well. So. Yeah. Like I said, daunting at first, but now I've got to the point where I'm, I'm quite comfortable with it. And what is what is more you? What is that? What is more? I think music is trying to push things a bit more. I think I guess when when you was in like a more you know indie band, you, you yeah you get you get you get pigeonholed, don't you? You think oh well, well this sounds like us. We'll do this, but it, we're trying to. I guess now it's almost like if we're writing a new song, playing it to playing the band, it's like let's try and if it's sounding too much like a. What, we, what I've done before, let's push it somewhere else and let's try and do something a bit more interesting or a bit weirder. And that's why I'm kind of kind of glad that the first track's kind of a bit weird. I don't think people would expect it. Mm-hmm. But hopefully ones that are coming down the line are probably a bit more catchy, a bit more a bit more sort of indie pop or whatever, but still with that sort of edge. So I'm, I'm just trying to do things that are a bit different and a bit more like something I'd like to listen to, I guess. Yeah, so is this the, the first single, the first solo one then, Only 19? Yes, this is this is the first one released. So like I say, this is very much like the start and it's a, it, that's quite a moody, sort of dark, weird track, really. And again, it's like it, it was one of them songs where first, when I first took it down to the to the guys at the studio and the band, it was very much like maybe it could have been like a, an indie track or no, it's not, but you know, like it was something that I've done before. But the idea was, well, let's try and let's try and do something a bit different. Let's try and push it. So that's that's the idea we've got with 
with all the songs that are working on at the moment, really. So what's Only 19 all about, then? I guess it's, it sounds a bit, it's a bit retrospective, you know, looking back on looking back on the past and that sort of thing. I saw, I think I first wrote, again, I probably wrote I, it. What happened to you when you were 19, as I'm, I'm getting at? What <laughs> well, nothing in particular. I think, it, you know what, it's probably looking at back at, like, um, I probably wrote it when, when the band was finishing and things like that. So it was very much like looking at, like, oh, it's almost a bit like feeling a bit sorry for yourself, sort of thing, like... Yeah. This is what we used to do, and it's, it's like at that point, a bit. I guess you're a bit lost, aren't you? When the band finished, when we was in COVID, didn't know what was going to happen. Mm. Uh, and like I say, it was one of the first songs that I wrote for this new thing that I didn't know was going to be a new thing at that point. I was just writing, uh, and it's very much just looking back at like being a bit of a shit or something, like, a, bit, a, bit, a bit of a bit of a bit of a shit when you're 19 and yeah. getting up, you know, good and stuff like that. But like I say, it's it's kind of dark, it's kind of moody, but um, mm. no. Okay, so um, the first single then, so uh, what's the plan for the new single? As a new artist out there in the world, I think I saw a stat where, I think it is it like 350,000 new tunes get added to Spotify every day, and those fucking bastards at Spotify are deciding to, if you don't get a thousand streams a year, they're not going to pay for you anyway. Um, they're getting worse. It's, it's daunting, isn't it? I'm well. Sorry, I've gone, on a, I've gone on a little side uh, rant <laughs> It's it, that's all daunting as well. It's like I, I remember, like I've obviously got my track into Spotify and stuff like that. But I was really worried that like I'd put my track into Spotify, then it'd go under someone else called Caleb Francis. Yeah. And like, what to do on the so like things like that you got to think about, aren't you? Um, but I guess it's just I, we're trying to gig as much as possible around this single. Try and play, get out and play. Actually, push the song out and things like that. You know, get, try and get on as many sort of. Spotify playlists as things like that as, as much as possible. I've got your mate uh, Rob Erst working with Rob to do some right. bits with you as well. Right. So just all that trying to build, just trying to build a team of people around you to help and push it, and 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 you bring in people who are good at what they do and try and get the track out there. Oh, good work, mate. So if ever, so there's going to be a link to the new tune, and we're going to review it on RGM. We're going to do all sorts. Um, we'll get a new video out for you. Have you got a new video or anything like that? Is, is that all been? Yeah, so we just need to start click on that shortly. Like I said, that, that'll yeah. probably be out so in December time, something like that, hopefully, nice. fingers crossed. But we'll again, just trying, to, trying to build that sort of like package of material around the track, isn't it? and push it and get it out to as many people as possible, yeah. get it in blogs and, and things like that, and then then start to think about the next one and record that, and then hopefully get a bit of a bit of momentum and start building. And like I say, I think gigging is obviously a big thing. Get out and gig, so yeah. get in front of people and play it, and then play the rest of your songs, and then try and... So I do think this. I do think there's still the old school sort of approach of gigging, and then come back to that city and playing to a few more people. I think that's still yeah. a thing. People want to see live yeah. bands. And people want to see that. Yeah, Devi kept all the old <clears throat> like email lists for the Wired and that kind of stuff, and Nick robbed them for yourself and use all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is that, that, that accounts and all that shit? Just rebrand it to you now and all that. No, I've never done. I've not done that. I've not. I've, the, the old accounts are still there. I've started from scratch from accounts, but obviously, I've been tapping into people that I used before to maybe help us get some and things but, like that. Make it as easy as possible for yourself, aren't you? You know, well, yeah. definitely. Yeah, you've got to use on contacts, aren't you? Definitely. So, so it, within the description of this podcast, there's going to be a link to your new tune, mate. Um, if somebody's hovering over that link and they haven't pressed it yet, what would you say to them? Press it. You won't regret it. You'll oh, love it. Nice. There you go. There we go. So, Caleb, it's always a pleasure. Um, it's nice to see you doing so well on grafting, mate, and still at it. Uh, it's very much appreciated, and uh, for you joining us today and spending that time with us today. Is a, uh, have you got much on for the rest of your day? Nothing, no, really. Back to back to back to the grind, really. I guess nothing. The grind, yeah, fair enough, mate. Well, thanks for joining us uh, for this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week for another one. Toodaloo.